Hey guys, welcome back. We have had a little interview with Vic Davis and we're going now, we're gonna interview Vic about the old timey ways. And I've got a 1929 cookbook sitting in front of me. That cookbook is older than Vic is. And that truck in front of me is a, what year is that truck, Vic? 36, 1936. That's older than me. <laughs> You know, now that I think about it, most everything out here is older than me. That's a good feeling. <laughs> Except for that youngin' over there. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> we are going to have a good day today visiting with a very, very special, special gentleman, Gilmer County's finest, Vic Davis, part of the Davis brother family. And um, on the earlier segment, we talked about your mom died at 49 years old. How sad was that? Um, how many children did your mother have? Six. Six children. Two two girls and four boys. And all of them just about as fine as you are. Well, <laughs> I don't. We don't want to stretch this too bad. <laughs> <laughs> and Bobby's gonna be watching, and Bobby's gonna say, "That's right, that's right." <laughs> and he'll say, "The baby's the best of all." <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we were talking about your pickup truck in front of us now and uh, the fact that you bought it, brought it home, and Sally claimed it. So you kind of put it in her name, and you let her enjoy claiming that truck, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, she, she claimed it the night I brought it home, and so as far as I was concerned, it was hers. Yep, there you go. There you go. That's a good man right there. That's a good man. How long did you work on that truck? I worked on it five years, uh, not every day, just when I had a little time and money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It took me five years. I, I actually finished it yep. and put it on the road in 1990. Yep. Now, that truck is a part of something that you and a very special man have been working on, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's part of a project. <laughs> it's part of the project. He he calls me as foreman, but I'm, I'm not hardly there yet. But <laughs> I don't know. I'd say you are the authoritative figure at 57 Heaven. <laughs> he trusts your advice, and, and y'all just have the greatest relationship. That I'm, is so I cool. might admit him. I might admit some of that when he starts paying me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Well, let, let's see what he's over here doing, because it looks to me like he's doing old-timey work. Ways, and he's cooking off a pot. Yeah. And you know how he found out how to do that, don't you? No, I'm. Uh -huh. We looked on the internet. Uh, no. Uh oh. I done noted. He done noted. Oh. He done noted. He done noted. I used to boil it. I did clean pots for those guys in the war. I used to. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're so full. Was that the Civil War? <laughs> That's yeah. how I always cleaned them. Was, uh, yeah. Same thing it said on Google. Uh, uh -huh. I already knew it. You know. Yeah. Because yeah. I cleaned so many. Yes. Back in the back olden in the days. Yeah. It was on them landing uh, things. Those. Uh, what do you call them? They float out in the sea and the plant landing. What do you call them? Was it LST? Something like that. Yeah, that's what it was. And uh, them planes that come in there and land on that. And I, I always had, I was responsible for having your pots mm -hmm. clean when they come in. Uh -huh. Now, while you've sat down here, I want you to tell the story right now about that beautiful tree because that is, we are sitting in a perfect spot. Tell me the story about that tree. He come up in 1987. I was mowing the yard one day and uh uh, saw it coming up and I mowed around it and then I got some scissors and clipped around it and I drove a stake up to the side of it and it, was, it wasn't that tall and a little oak leaf coming out of the ground. Look at it y'all, just I look know. at that. It's amazing. And I kept on mowing around it and me and my daddy, we'd always make sure we didn't cut the little oak and yeah. there he is today. I tell you, Growing it, uh, raising oak trees will make you old. Yeah, yeah, that is 35 <laughs> years old, is that what you said? Uh, I don't know, it's, it's it come up in 87, what is that? Yeah. It's a long time, yeah, about 35. Yeah. Well, were we talking about this one? Yes, oh, yes, gosh, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? And Vic, there's your truck. It, it is just, what a beautiful setting, what a beautiful sight. This would be a great place to build a home. This will be a good memory right here. This is beautiful. This back is, to Mr. Victor now. He's let's go tell back. He's going to about some old times. That's right. <laughs> old times when you were a child. And when I showed you that cookbook from 1929, you said them groceries looked pretty good. Then you were telling us about your mama cooking on a wood stove. She cooked on a wood stove all her life. What about that? Yeah. Never, never had an electric stove. Did she make y'all's clothes? Yes. Yes. She, yeah. I, uh, she, she sewed on a old uh, 
sewing machine and a pedal. Treadle sewing treadle machine. Type, yeah. mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And did she have a garden? Oh, yeah, she did garden. My dad did most of the gardening, but she did a lot, too. Now, mm -hmm. here's a good mm -hmm. one. Did uh -huh. your mommy ever tell you you was getting too big for your britches? Frequently. Yeah, I heard that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she worked in the garden, and, and uh, from in the early spring, anything that come in that could be canned, mm -hmm. she canned it. She mm -hmm. canned hard, worked hard on that. And I think about it, and I almost cry sometimes when she, in the hot summertime, and of course no air conditioning, mm -hmm. and that stove going wide open, and her boiling and canning, and mm -hmm. and she did that all summer long. It, and I've heard her say, if we don't can up some stuff, we'll starve out this winter. Right, and that was very true. And That's it was very true. true. It was yeah. True. Well, you know, it's so weird because I grew up in the city, but my roots are Dawson County, and my grandparents were poor, poor, poor. And sure. I can remember biscuits in a warming closet yeah. on an old wood stove. Yeah. You'd go to visit, and that's what they had. You know, that was it. And, and I know we don't mean to say that we were worse off than the other people. It, it was a common thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they, right. here and there, they'd be a family that had a little old store or something. They, they, they did better, but... Most everybody was pretty much in the same boat. Mm -hmm. And your daddy made liquor. My granddaddy oh, made yeah, liquor. Oh, yeah, yeah. My dad was a moonshiner. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. did other things, too, in his earlier... He was a... Dad was a jack-of-all-trades, kind of. He could sawmill. He could saw at a sawmill. But, you know, sawmills, they moved them around from time to time. You probably remember that. And uh, they, if you had a set of timber, they called it, well, they'd just move the whole operation there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he could saw and he could run an edger. And, and he was handy with what tools he had, mm -hmm. hay baling wire and power flyers, you know. And uh, and I, I think me and my brothers sort of took some of that from him. And it was good training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But you know, your parents both died young. Yes, they did. Yeah. Uh, Mama was two two weeks short of fifty when she passed away. Goodness. And Dad made it till he was barely sixty five. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And you've lived to be a ripe old eighty eight. Eighty eight. All, all there's six of us kids, and every one live old to be older than them. I lost two brothers, you know, in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so there's, uh, and then I lost a sister about five years ago, and there's three of us left now. Mm -hmm. Me and uh, Bobby, you, you know Bobby, the yeah. singer, and uh, and my older sister, she's 97. And that's something. She just lives up the road from yeah, us yeah. now. And we have to say, we are near um, the most beautiful mountain. Fort Mountain is such oh, a beautiful yeah. place. You can't beat it. No, and we want to invite everybody to welcome to LJ. Come and see oh, these beautiful absolutely. mountains. Yeah, yeah. I've been fortunate enough to not see you much, but um, my wife and I, uh, we had old 48 Chevrolet Club Coupe, and we saw 36 states in that old car. Oh, but I was always proud to get back to Gilmer County. Um, we saw, we were fortunate enough to see uh, Niagara Falls mm -hmm. shortly and, and lots of interesting places. Look at that. Look at that. He's just a show off. Look at that. <laughs> Who does he think he these. is? Chuck Wagon Boy? Look I at that. About having them. Oh my gosh. You're uh, just showing out. Uh -huh. I believe uh -huh. that's his method this of bragging. Up now it like that, and I brung, brung you was. Yeah, I brung him one that was raw, rough. Look, look at there. How about, that's what we'll cook in. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Awesome. We're going to do another cooking show here, yeah. Vic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is awesome. Good that looks shape. great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oz, what, what's his name? I don't know. Griswold. Griswold, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Now, Vic, did your mom cook on pots like that? Yes, she did. Yeah. Uh, uh, like I said a while ago, she she canned a big family, mm -hmm. so she canned uh, green beans and and vegetables in in half gallon cans. Mm -hmm. And she had a black pot similar to that, only it was about so tall. Right. She could dump a half gallon, and uh, in the winter time especially, uh, we she'd cook on drag coals out from the fireplace mm -hmm. and cook and boil those 
those things with a, if we had a piece of fat back or something in them. And mm -hmm. That's wire up and eat. <laughs> wow, wow. And then she'd finish them off then in the morning. She'd get up around four o'clock and start a fire and, and cook breakfast for all of us and uh, big biscuits, you know. And and she'd finish them off in the mornings then. And then, boy, by lunchtime, they were ready to... You could just about inhale them. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Vic, you had sisters too, didn't you? Yep. Yep. You got sisters, tell about them. Well, I, I mentioned briefly oh, there a while ago. Uh, my older sister is the one that's, uh, she's the oldest of the kids, and, and she was 97 just a week or so ago. And then uh, my other sister was four or five years younger. And then there was a four or five year span between her and, uh, and my birth. And, uh, and well, she was born in my, sister that passed away, she was uh, born in 30, I think. Mm -hmm. And Opal was born, my older sister, in 25, and I was born in 34. Mm -hmm. And wow. Larry, 36. And the two younger ones, they were Bobby and Donnie. They were, I think I'm about 10 years older than Bobby, and I don't remember their date, mm -hmm. birthdays exactly, but so y'all were spread out pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. came in pairs, kind of. Sounds, sounds <laughs> like it. Sounds like it. That was one reason I think <laughs> it, uh, me and Larry were close. We were close in age, and we liked the same things. We tried to play a little music, and we both liked cars. And and uh, I, like I said earlier, I think he 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 uh, made a good living. Uh, had his own shop. Mm -hmm. Self-taught, but mm -hmm. in his day, he was counted one of the best, I think, around here. For music, did either one of your parents have a musical ability? Yeah, Dad played the fiddle, okay. old-time fiddle. You know, most old-time fellers, there's just lots of them had fiddles, mm -hmm. and they they played square dances, and somehow they had a a, a way of playing the fiddle that, that somehow it made the time. I don't, I never wow. figured that out, and uh, but. I, I understand that both my grandfathers played the fiddle. Now, they both died real young, and I never mm -hmm. never knew either one of my grandfathers. Goodness. But I, under, I understand they both played fiddles, and, and I've actually got my grandfather Davis's fiddle. How cool is that? And he died in 1918. My goodness. <laughs> How fortunate for you. Well, we want to tell folks to go to YouTube and check out Dwight Sanford and you and Bobby. Oh. Because <coughs> y'all are all over there. We've got you all over YouTube and y'all are singing. I've always said if you can keep a few people fooled, you'll maybe make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, people are loving seeing y'all together. Well, they just absolutely love the music, love the comedy, love everything yeah. about y'all's relationship. Well, Larry and I played... Uh, just about any benefit over the years that you can mention. We never felt like we were good enough to go anywhere with it. Uh, and it's it's a, it's a hard life to make a living at, mm -hmm. as we all know. You remember all them heart fun shows right. we used to do? <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Me and you and Larry and yeah. well, Morgan Cantrell way back yeah. in the day. We've done heart fun shows forever. I think we had 52 or three heart fun shows. Yeah. And... Uh, I think, I'm not positive this, but I think I played on the first one. And I played on at least 40 more of them are Lord, involved in some way or other. And Me way. and you was together on the yeah. last 20 for sure. Yeah, right. Or 30. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lord, am I, are you boiling the pot over? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm wanting it scary. to so it'll get up on them sides and get that cleaned off. Okay. Lordy me, this is country living, Vic, isn't it? This is this is what folks need to learn about. If you're coming to Ella J and you've only been to the square, you haven't seen Ella J. No, no, you haven't that's seen Ella J. We're on the top lot. Mm -hmm. A mighty fine place to be. About yeah. my favorite place to be. <laughs> just about. It's just the trees and the, oh man, there's always a breeze here yeah. and the shade. It's just awesome. It's awesome. We, we want to tell folks to check out the music of Vic Davis, and there is a new CD that's going to be out that's a gift yeah, to some folks. Can't talk a whole lot about it. No, at this we point, can't. But, uh, yeah, 
it's coming out. It's going to be very special. Uh, it's a real special because Dwight was in. He done all the music and uh, and every instrument. Everything. He's an engineer. <laughs> He's a jack of all trades. And there's another name he can can put in there, but I don't know. Yeah. Say it on television. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a good one. He's a good one. <laughs> He's a good one. <clears throat> well, thank you for visiting with us today, and thank you for sharing Miss Sally's truck, because that's a mighty fine truck. That's a mighty fine truck. Yeah, let me say one other thing about the little truck. Uh, Sally passed away, of course, a few years ago, but she got to drive the truck uh, to some parades and actually showed it a couple or three shows and won an award or two with it, and it, it's not nothing compared to what some people did, but the thing about it is, I, I handmade that thing. Um, well, I had some help from Larry, and uh, I didn't paint it, though. I can't take no credit for that. Pop Goble, a, a good friend of all of us, mm -hmm. and he was, he, he was a, him and Larry was Larry types. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they were just, they could do anything, and, and uh, have the deepest respect for Pop, and he's the one painted it, so he gets credit for the looks. That is one cool truck. Well, you got anything else you want to say, Mr. Ella J? Well, I don't know. We're, we're at the foothills of beautiful Fort Mountain, a place I dearly love to be, on the top lot. The best. At the Dwight House. At the Dwight House. <laughs> we're going to leave you now where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. We'll see you again soon, y'all.